Welcome to NFL Picks Against the Spread, brought to you by us here at Sportsnet. For you on YouTube, we are in week nine. And full disclosure, we're taping this before the trade deadline. Yeah, Tuesday morning. Yeah, so there could be some trades to swing this. I'm sure Bill yeah. Belichick has something up his sleeve. Sure. But we're doing this as if the teams are, the way they ended week eight and started week nine. And it's crazy, actually. No double-digit spreads this week. Oh yeah, surprising, that, no? Yeah, that yeah, I think it is surprising. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I've done really poorly against a double-digit spread, so so that's good for us. Yes, I think. I, and you had an eventful week eight. I did. Taking yeah, taking in the game. Yeah, I was in Buffalo, um, where Eagles fans from from Philadelphia and a lot from Canada took over that that stadium in Buffalo. It was it was really impressive. Um, and there were a lot of uh, a lot of fly eagles fly songs sang on Sunday, so it was good. It was fun, you know. It was uh, you expect as an away fan to kind of you know be the odd man out. We weren't we weren't on Sunday, so it was fun. It's a good feeling. Terrible to, weather to win in but, enemy territory. That's yeah, a game exactly. that you both won watching, but also you won in terms of your picks I actually in this did. segment. Oh, I actually thought, did. I thought you picked Philly. No, I took the Bills. Oh, I, I spoke out of turn. You yeah, should have. Well, I should have. I def- yeah, That's I what happens when you head your bet, folks. Yeah, totally. It was uh, a mistake. San Fran going into I guess enemy territory in Arizona. Yeah, yeah uh, I guess. This is the spread I actually thought was the most likely to be a double-digit spread yep. given the fact that they put up 50-plus yeah, they were really dominant. against Carolina. What do you make of this game, the Thursday nighter, with uh, Arizona, who started as a seven-point favorite and now moved to 9.5? I think it's tough because it is a Thursday nighter. Uh, we saw the Vikings against Washington last Thursday night not cover what was a, a big spread, but you know they were fairly close to doing it. But Thursday night, it's always kind of a wild card. You never really know what's going to happen or how teams are going to show up, but... I'm done questioning the 49ers. I think game after the game, they've they've made statements. The the defense over the last four weeks, 180 yards per game, less than 14 points per game, and nine turnovers forced. They've just been dominant since the bye week. And as much as I think that the, the Cardinals are taking a, the right step forward, the offense looks good, we saw against the Saints – what will happen when this team comes up against true contenders. And that's exactly what the 49ers are. So I feel fairly comfortable taking San Fran uh, to cover nine and a half. You're right. Thursday nighters are tough to to make sense of a lot of times. And a lot of times it's bad football because you probably shouldn't be playing uh, football within a short week. The short week actually has me feeling more confident about San Fran. They're a team with greater depth to four guys who can run the ball for them effectively and as good as Chase Edmonds has been, David Johnson, we already know, is not going to play on, on the yeah. short week. And so for those reasons, and Arizona has been beat up in general. Yep. I like San Fran, the deeper team, the more healthier team. So Sounds like Kenyon Drake's going to get a lot of the touches there after just being traded on Monday. Yeah. So that, that might not go very well. Again, especially on a short week. Yeah, exactly. So um, the air raid offense, not the most difficult for running backs, but still, it's going to be tough. I like yeah. San Fran in that game. Houston, Jacksonville, um, the the divisional matchup. The Houston Texans are minus two uh, road favorites. Do you like them to win in the London Derby as Jacksonville, their second home, mm-hmm. is, is playing uh, in England? Do you, do you like them to win this week? I I think. I think the Texans can win this, and I, I, w- I was kind of expecting the spread to be a little bit bigger, but but since the Texans blew out at Adla- Atlanta in Week 5, they really haven't won lopsidedly, and so the Jaguars are playing well, but I, I really do think the Texans are the better team here, and, and at minus 2, a field goal win, I think the Texans are the pick here. I'm actually going to go with the Jags. Yeah? Yeah. The, you think the they're, they're going to win straight up? I do think they're going to win yeah. outright. You got a huh. 9.30 a.m. Eastern start in London, so I, I like yeah. the East Coast team a little bit more because of that. Jacksonville, as I stated, goes and plays in England yeah. every year. That's, yeah. It's their they're second home. They're, they're comfortable with it. The loss of J.J. Watt, to me, is, it's huge. is big. It's and, huge. And 
I, I know we're used to them losing J.J. Watt at some point of, yeah, of the year. Yeah, it has become, you know, unfortunately a common occurrence. Yeah, the, the, the time when he was, you know, Aaron Donald before Aaron Donald and, and yeah. giving you value as a guy getting after the passer, but also as a red zone tight end seemed like long, long ago. But the fact that they traded Clowney early in the year and they lose Watt, yeah. um, Gardner Minshew has been good about avoiding pressure. I'm not sure how pressured he's going to be uh, i like jacksonville do you, do you uh, think that them going i mean i don't know the jaguars record because they do go to london a lot but do you think them going to london takes away some type of home field advantage they might have like that that's kind of a toss-up for me i ex- no, i do i think their advantage is familiarity yeah. the fact that they go that to london that often that the they're used to it, it brings, i mean yeah. I, in the early years of nfl teams going to play regular season games in England, we heard complaints about the grass is longer and the food throughout the week wasn't very good. Yeah. And now with the Jags going there every year, I just think yeah. no those are things you, you hear. I, I don't think it's going to be a pro Jacksonville crowd. I don't think yeah. they've built a fan base over there, but I do think um, operationally having that is just something that we do as Could a team right. yeah. helps. Yep. Uh, in Buffalo, it was pr- Almost a home game for Philly, basically, yeah. Especially how, how well they played. Yeah, uh, they get a real home game in their favorites at home, minus five as they host the Chicago Bears. Who do you like? We've talked a lot about who Philadelphia is, especially offensively. Like, what is their identity? They're not the big play team they were when Carson Wentz was so good in 2017. But I think on Sunday we kind of saw what this Eagles team is. If they can run the ball effectively. And Wentz makes good decisions. He makes a couple big plays with his arm. And the defense plays okay. They weren't really tested through the air on Sunday. But if they stop the run and, you know, they're getting more healthy, then that's the way that this Eagles team is going to win games. And I think coming up against the Bears, who are obviously really struggling, um, especially offensively, I think this is kind of the perfect matchup for them. They can they can establish the run against a defense that's that's been good, but I think can be had. And, and really, their biggest weakness won't be challenged because Trubisky won't really test them down the field. So minus five, I like the Eagles at home after what's been kind of a pretty tough road trip for them. Quite is kept because their play has been up and down and, and some of the yardage has come at the end of games. But Carson Wentz is quietly putting together a pretty good, almost MVP-adjacent yeah. type year when you consider – the amount of wide receiver talent he's been without for yep. large stretches this year. On the flip side, Trubisky seems to get worse week in and week out. I mean, I don't even really want to fixate on talking about him because just go through our playlist and play what I said about Trubisky last week or the week before. Right. The thing is, I'm losing confidence in Matt Nagy yeah. as, a, as, a, as a play caller, but even just as a game manager. Yeah. And... Well, we see Andy Reid adjust yes. to Mahomes being out. Yes. But Nagy really hasn't made any adjustments. I guess they ran the ball a little bit better last week, but but they need to manufacture some points. And if he's a good offensive schemer, then he should be finding ways to, to score points. Yeah, and especially late in the game when you have a chance to go out and outright win it and to not yeah. be aggressive. Right. To me, it's, it's, it's a bad message to your team. And, and the message he gave us through the media last week was that he's not dumb. He knows yeah. he needs to run the ball. He's not dumb. Yeah. Well, I'm now questioning if he's dumb because he's making a lot of... Uh, the decisions aren't great, that's no. for sure. And now they got to go on the road against a team that's you know still desperate. It's going to be tough. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm taking Philly as well. Yeah. Uh, Minnesota goes to KC. The Vikings are two-and-a-half-point favorites. Yeah. In this game, I'm assuming that Mahomes... Still isn't playing. Uh, it, he shouldn't be. They, I, sh- they can't rush him back for sure. I, I think. Forget about Chiefs fans. I think football fans in general yeah. want to see him play badly, which is why they want to see him stay away and get healthy. Exactly. Because him, when he's not right, is not it's not nearly as fun to watch. No. Uh, the Vikings' offense is becoming more fun yeah. to watch. They've been really good. Yeah. Uh, who do you like in this one? It's, it, like we said here last week. Andy Reid did do a good job of getting Matt Moore ready, and that offense looked good, probably a lot better than a lot of people thought. But what I really thought was impressive was the Chiefs' 
defense against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. They had a lot of injuries last week. Chris Jones, Frank Clark, Kendall Fuller were all out. And the only reason they lost that game is because Aaron Rodgers is a is a wizard uh, and makes throws no one else can make. You know, like he's having an MVP type year. So as well as the Vikings are playing, I'm going to go with the Chiefs and I'm going to go with them to to break what has kind of been a weird losing streak at home, something they don't usually do. So I don't think that keeps up. And as as home underdogs, I, I like the Chiefs here. So I'm actually going to go with Minnesota because of the play of the quarterback, which is something I never thought I would yeah, say. Yeah, wow. But I also turn around. never thought I would say Kirk Cousins is, and don't at me, he's <laughs> not going to win it and he shouldn't. But he's playing at an MVP level, which sounds crazy considering the first four weeks of the season was some of the worst quarterback play yeah. I've seen in a long time. But the last four weeks, he's been pretty good, so much so that through eight games, here are the numbers he's putting up. 72.1 completion percentage, 9.3 yards per attempt, 4.33 TD to interception ratio, and a 115.2 passer rating. That sounds a lot like Patrick Mahomes' MVP year of 65.6 completion percentage, mm. 8.9 yards per attempt, 4.33 TD to interception ratio, and a 115.3 pass rating. Kirk Cousins is kind of playing like Patrick Mahomes. Granted, it's only half a season. Yeah, yeah. But That's still. That's the thing for me. Like, when does the ball drop here? True. Well, but, but part of my, my hesitancy with going with the Chiefs is the fact that um, when is – the ball drop is something you could also say about LaShawn McCoy when he's running in the open field and he's <laughs> yeah. carrying the ball like a loaf yeah. of bread, which I'm, I'm astounded that he's made it to the NFL level without yeah. doing the we, basic we thing. We might not see much more of him after doing stuff like that. Like, yeah. I don't think he played another snap after he did that. Well, I mean, and again, this is before the trade deadline, but if you're reading Twitter, people felt like he may be traded because yeah. of that. Yeah. Uh, I like – the running game with Minnesota more. Mm-hmm. I like the quarterback with Minnesota more. I like the defense with Minnesota more. So two and a half points for me with a struggling Chiefs team, that's not too bad. All right. I'm not sure what to make of either quarterbacks in the next matchup. Carolina is minus four favorites at home, but we just saw them get destroyed. And maybe the, the bloom is off the rose a little bit with Kyle Allen. The flip side, Tennessee comes to town. You don't feel about good about anybody who they have on their depth chart no. that plays the quarterback no. position. Who do you got? I think we were always kind of just waiting to see this happen with Kyle Allen. I, it, it's a tough situation. He's not he he's an okay quarterback, but he's not going to be an elite quarterback. And that I think that San Fran defense just kind of took them by storm. And and I expect them to bounce back and have a chance to win in this game. But I do like what the Titans have done over the last couple weeks. And for them to go into Carolina, they've moved the ball well um, with Tannehill. The defense has been good. They forced four turnovers last week. Uh, So, well, I I think Carolina could win this game. I'm going to pick the Titans to keep it tight. I think Titans win outright. Hmm. And... Am I a believer in Tannehill? No, but no. That that team seems to be uh, yeah. because they've been playing much better. Sure, since the offense is way better. He's taken over the, yeah. the three and hole with him as a starter. So I, yeah, I think Tennessee with that defense and through gaining momentum played really mm-hmm. well against Tampa. Yep. I think they could go into Carolina, a team that's been pretty one dimensional, um, and 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 do something similar. So I, I'm taking Tennessee uh, in that matchup. Indy and Pittsburgh. Yeah. Pittsburgh, after playing on Monday night, is a one and a half point favorite at home. This line is confusing to me. Is it to you? Yeah, it, sure. Yeah. Ag- against against uh, the Indianapolis Colts. Definitely. Uh, I think the Steelers aren't a great team, but going through the stretch of the season will probably play spoiler a couple times. They have a good enough defense that they'll create some trouble. Um, but on Monday night, like if they're playing a team that isn't as nearly as inept as Miami, they lose that game. So based on what I saw on Monday night and based on the way the Colts are playing, it wasn't pretty on Sunday against Denver. There's no denying that. But this is a team that that has gone on the road. 
KC, for example, and won big games. And I expect that they're going to bounce back pretty well, given what a what a poor performance it was on Sunday, even though they got the win. So I feel pretty confident taking the Colts here. I'm taking the Colts as well. They're, they're, they're first in their division for a reason. I think the Steelers started the season 0-3 for a reason. It, they played better against the Dolphins, but it was still the Dolphins. And the Dolphins still were up early in the football game. Now you're telling me that James Conner banged up once again. Yeah, he might not even play. Yeah, so uh, it, it, one thing that we've learned this year is bet on a quarterback that once was a Patriot, whether it's Garoppolo or obviously Brady is still a Patriot, mm-hmm. or Brissett, who's, yeah. who's played well. Played and so really well. I have no issue taking the Colts. I've said quite frequently in this space this year, just stream the Jets and stream the Dolphins. Just pick whoever their opposition is. You'll do okay. Right. Only problem is they're in the same division. What happens when they're playing each other? Yeah, they're going to play each other twice. (laughs) So where do you go from there? The Jets on the road in Miami are minus three. Who do you like? I honestly think that the Dolphins could win this game based on – what we saw Monday night from Fitzpatrick, he has that offense moving a li- little bit better, but it has less to do with the Dolphins and more to do with the Jets. The Jets just can't get out of their own way. After after the ghost game against the Patriots, they then allow eight sacks, and Darnold throws three picks, and C.J. Mosley is now out, and now it's entirely possible that by the time this video comes out, Le'Veon Bell isn't even there anymore. So... Even if he is, I'm going to take the Dolphins, and I think that they get their first win. I also am going to take the Dolphins. Wow. That's two weeks in a row we've both taken the Dolphins. Yeah. It paid off last week, too. He, yeah, it did. And I think it's going to pay off this week. And it's one thing, listen, the Dolphins are have been bad, but they've been active participants in their demise. They're yeah. trying to be bad. The Jets aren't, and they've still been right. bad. And, that's, and it, that's what's so much worse about this. Yeah. They want to be good, and they're not. And let's not forget, the guy who's coaching the Jets – was fired by the Dolphins. Yeah. Like it, it's, that's how bad he is. <laughs> Here's a stat for you. Adam Gase has coached 56 games in his career. Based on those games, his teams are more likely to lose by double digits, happened 25 times, than to win games, happened 24 times. Wow. He's not a very good football coach. <laughs> no. The fact that they're at home and they're underdogs, uh, I'll, I'll – Take the, the three points, and yep. I'll, I'll ride with Miami. Yeah. This is a big spread. Surprising given Buffalo's coming off a home loss. They're at home again, but they're welcoming Washington. Uh, the Bills are nine-and-a-half-point favorites at home. Who do you like? I don't love the spread. I really hmm. don't. For me, uh, you know, the Bills struggled on Sunday given – against a better team than than the team they're going to face this weekend. But they couldn't run the ball. Josh Allen threw it way too many times, didn't complete more than half of his passes. And and what's even more concerning is that the defense gave up a lot of yards for the second straight week. And and although it's Washington, the Bills are just 1 and 3 against the spread at home. And that only win was was when they were underdogs. They ended up losing that game. So I think the spread is just a bit too big for me here, and I'm going to take Washington. I agree. If it was eight and a half or even nine, I'd be more interested. And I certainly think the Bills are going to win. I just don't yeah, I see do them covering by that much. Yeah. So History so far this season tells us that they're, they don't cover these big spreads at home, and those games are against bad teams. So it, it seems that this trend will continue. Yeah. Seattle hosts Tampa Bay. Is Tampa Bay a bad team? I think so. Yeah. When you turn the ball over like that, you're a bad team. Yeah, and Bruce Arians can say that those turnovers aren't on Jameis. They're on the receivers. But Mm. is that (laughs) that been the case for his entire career? No, not at all. I just feel like he's he's stuck. He's gone, and he's back Jameis, and he said, he's my guy. I don't care what anyone thinks. And now he's kind of stuck in that position, and they're stuck with him at quarterback for the foreseeable future. Yeah, for at least the rest of the season. Yeah, and where Russell Wilson is playing um, his best football 
is there any reason not to go Seattle at minus six at home? The only reason that I can think of is that the Seahawks are 0 and 4 against the spread at home this year, which is pretty surprising. Hmm. Yeah. But that seems improbable to continue. So I'm actually going to take the Seahawks because of that, hmm. because I, I actually don't think that they're going to go 0 and 5 against the spread at home. Yeah, I would take the Seahawks even if this line was seven or eight or nine. I, I really comfortable with them against Tampa Bay. Uh, Detroit goes to Oakland. Oakland at home is the minus two favorite. I'm going to be honest. I was a little bit surprised by this. But Detroit is as good as they've played, and they've had a bunch of moral victories. Um, they've struggled at the end of ball games, and Oakland has been a bit friskier than we thought. Mm-hmm. Do you like them as the favorite at home? Yeah, I do. This is the first time that they've been home since week two, so it's been a long <laughs> road because they had that one home game, which was in London, so not a home game at all. Um, and and any time that we kind of count Oakland out, that or at least when I have this season, they've actually played really well. And that that was the case last week when they were in Houston, and and they only lost by three points and were leading late in that game. Uh, the Lions, you know, they got a win against the Giants, but it's definitely not as dominant a win as as you'd like it. Uh, Danny Dimes had four touchdowns and no picks. is by far his best game of the year so far. And and the Raiders' offense is actually pretty good. Derek Carr is playing well. He's efficient, and they run the ball well. So I, I like the Raiders to win at home here. Yeah, the, the Giants were able to put up 26 points against that Lions defense that yeah. had been playing so well. I just I, the troubles me. I just I don't know how much faith I have in Oakland. So to me, I'm a bit comfortable with them as a home favorite. I think who's the better team? Detroit is. And so if you're giving me some points with them, even though it is a road game, I'll I'll take the Lions. But that's not that to me. That's more of a stay away. That's not one I feel yeah. great about. Yeah. Either way, I do feel great about this next one. The Packers going to L.A., facing off with the Chargers, minus three road favorites. Do you have a good feeling about it? Yeah, this is the no-brainer of the week for me, I think. The way, sure, the Chargers got a win um, this week, but, you know, they needed a missed field goal to get it. And they're still more banged up than most teams in the league right now. And Aaron Rodgers is playing at a whole other level. This is Aaron Rodgers we haven't seen for four or five years right now some of the passes that he made sunday night were almost unfathomable the way he's throwing the ball so i the packers here at that number seems pretty easy for me it, it almost is so easy that it i'm second guessing myself here but i think i'm gonna go with the packers there's no doubt yeah i mean just look at the difference in the running games. Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams yeah. have been yeah, a revelation. Yeah. Uh, after starting the year, and people were saying, "What's going on with the Packers? They're you know first and goal, and they run four plays and don't run it once." Now they're running and passing to both of those guys yeah. very efficiently. Uh, Melvin Gordon has come back, but he hasn't really been the same player. Again, may not be there by the time this this game happens. Right. So certainly, I like the Packers uh, in that one. I will take minus three all day every day even though it's on the road it's not like the chargers have much of a no there'll be more packer advantage. fans than there will be charger fans i would bet C- certainly uh cleveland has been the enigma of the season good luck if you're a browns fan good luck if you're betting um for them but this is actually a situation where i'm actually pretty confident in them they're minus three again on the road but going to denver a situation where the quarterback, Joe Flacco, hasn't played well, could be put on IR, certainly is, is not going to play in this game, and is yeah. calling out the play caller. Uh, the Broncos are just a mess. Yeah, the Broncos are a mess, and, and the Browns, they did okay after they put themselves in a really tough hole against the Patriots, like back-to-back-to-back to back to back turnovers. Yeah. You know, you go down 17 nothing to the Patriots, it's basically over. But they, then after that, you know, they, they hung tough. Whereas the Broncos are going to be starting a quarterback, no matter who it is, Brandon Allen or Drew Locke, whoever it ends up being, that has never thrown an NFL pass. <laughs> so for me, this is an easy decision because I just can't imagine the Browns blowing this. 
and we could regret that, but that, to me, that's a no-brainer. Agreed. The Sunday nighter is a good one. Patriots go to Baltimore, potentially maybe a AFC championship preview. Yeah. Uh, on the road, the Patriots are three and a half point favorites, which is probably one of the smaller lines we've seen for them all year. Who do you like? At some point, the Patriots defense is going to be tested by somebody and New England's offense is going to have to answer the bell. And and this is the best candidate in the NFL to give New England's defense some fits because they play a lot of man coverage. Lamar might not be able to beat them with his arm, but he can definitely beat them with his legs. And so I can see that causing some problems. And then it comes down to whether the Patriots offense can then answer the call. And I'm going to say that they don't and that the Ravens win this game. I'm going to go out on a limb here and, and pick Baltimore not only against the spread, but straight up. This is going to sound crazy because we're always looking for where we disagree. I agree. Huh. I, do, law of averages says that the Patriots are not going to run the table. Yeah. And when you look at their schedule, where are the potential losses? They're not coming in division, certainly. No. So this, to me, is, is the best candidate. Yeah. And I, I do think Lamar Jackson can give that defense fits. A defense that has been playing uh, lights out. Depending on what your scoring is in your fantasy league, they're either anywhere from the seventh best or best player in fantasy. Um, that's from a defense, so who you should draft only before you draft a kicker. Um, so, so they are next level, but... Lamar has shown that even when you're right defensively, even when you do everything right, he can make a play with his arm and with exactly. his legs. Yeah, uh, that game in Seattle proved exactly that. Yeah, things looked dead, plays looked dead, and then he would run and get first downs and you know gain thirty yards. So you can never count him out. Yeah, so I I do like the Ravens at the very least to cover. And again, the Patriots probably aren't going to run the table. So yeah, if anything, this is a candidate. This, this that is Chiefs game. Like those are the times when you know, a team will go 14-2. and two. Yeah. yeah. Those are the games. Although, I mean, when they did run the table in the regular season, it was because they had a all-time offense to hang their hat on. And it looks like right now they have an all-time yeah. defense. So you never know. But I think Baltimore uh, in that run game will give them uh, some trouble. Uh, and lastly, the Monday nighter. And this is a Monday nighter based off of fan bases and logos and markets alone. Not because... It's going to be a great game because I don't think it will. Dallas going to the Giants. Dallas coming off of the bye is the 7.5 point favorite, even though they're on the road. This line started at plus 3 for the Giants and is now 7.5. So hopefully you got in early. Yeah, really. Uh, despite it moving, who do you like? At, at 3, this was an obvious pick. It was always the Cowboys. But at 7.5... I think I'm actually going to take the Giants because they have been playing better the last few weeks. The defense is decent, and the Cowboys are coming off a bye where, where I think that that might actually hurt them here in what is usually a tough divisional game. So give me the Giants. I think the Cowboys are front runners, and they play well and get up and start puffing out their chest against bad teams. We saw it week one against the Giants. And when things get tough, uh, I mean, aside from the Jets, who are a bad team who beat them, uh, we, things get tough. They're, they're not nearly as efficient. And when you look at the Giants defensively, 22nd ranked run defense, 25th ranked pass defense, I just think arrested Ezekiel Elliott um, and uh, uh, arrested Amari Cooper, who's, who's been banged up throughout the year, uh, both have, have big days. And I, I do think... Even on the road, I think the Cowboys will cover and will win big because that's kind of been their MO. They'll they'll do I have a lot of faith in them against a like opponent in a close game? No. Aside from the win in Philly, they have been disappointing in those situations. Mm. But um, against bad teams, aside from uh, their performance against the Jets, uh, they've been much better. And I think the Giants still are a bad team, certainly a bad defense. So I'm going to go uh, with Dallas. Um, but I don't have a lot of confidence in it. Uh, let's go through the games that you have the most confidence in. G give me your top three. For bronze, it's uh, Browns at Broncos. I think that 
you know, given the fact that the the Denver Broncos are going to start a quarterback who's never played, it would be all time, you know, level uh, typical Browns if they blew this. But I feel confident enough to make it my bronze silver. I like the Colts at the Steelers, basically just to win, and then uh, the Packers over the Chargers by three is my gold. We we have some consensus. I have Denver as my bronze as well. I have the Packers as my gold as well. Uh, my silver, I have Seattle. I, mm. I, 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 I just think they're, they're, uh, they're a team that under Pete Carroll, they get, generally get better as the season goes on week in, week out. And, and yeah. they're a team that maybe doesn't start the best, but... By the time the playoffs come around, they're not a team that you want to face. And yeah. I, I see Tampa being the exact opposite. Some team that I mean, you look at the depth chart, and then they've got some names that we remember that had great college two careers. Two great but receivers. Two great receivers, but I, I don't I don't have faith in the com- or confidence in the quarterback. And um, the six and a half is the only reason that I didn't put this in here. That's just a little bit big of a spread for me to say. You know, this is going to happen. Yeah, I, I I can see that. I can see that. But I'm I, I to me it's less about my confidence in Seattle, although it's a big part of it. Yeah. It's it's equally um, and maybe more so about my lack of faith in in Tampa Bay. Yeah, and Jameis, and and specifically Jameis. Yeah. Who do you have so much faith in to win outright that you're going to give them your survivor pick this week? This is a tough one because the matchups are tough when it comes to survivor. There weren't that many where I thought, oh, that's a that's a guarantee. And I've taken teams like the Bills, uh, and there's no way I'm touching Jets, Dolphins, like we said before, for survivor. So I'm going to go with the Thursday nighter, which gives me, you know, a little bit of anxiety given that it's Thursday. But I like the 49ers to win at Arizona no matter what. I don't believe I've taken the Bills, so I'm going to take the Bills. They're at home, big spread, Washington traveling to them. I think it's a bounce-back game for them, so we shall see. Yeah. Uh, This has been fun. Enjoy the games. Enjoy some Halloween. Hopefully, uh, we've given you some more treats. Yeah, hopefully our our picks aren't that scary. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for watching.